Kia ora and welcome to this video on question 2 of the 2015 Skull Calc exam. The first part is a nice um, system of equations involving exponents and logs. The second is uh, an interesting, very contrived problem about a car driving along a parabola. Um, we'll look at that in two different ways. One using uh, differentiation and the other using the discriminant. And then question 2c uh, we've got this differential equation about the rate of spread of a rumour and we need to show that the number of students who know the rumour is equal to that beast of a function and we're going to also look at that in two different ways one using partial fractions and the other by differentiation Okay, question 2a the key thing to note in this problem uh, is that that first equation is actually a disguised quadratic. Because if I um, change everything to base 3, so I write 9 is 3 squared, which is something you would, would have done a few years back in the MCAT, then we can f play around with power rules. I can switch the 2x plus y around with the squared. And the other one is 3 to the power of 2x plus y. We add the powers when the base is the same. And then I can let u equal 2x plus y. And then I get... Um, do I want to do that? No, I want to... I want to go even further than that. You go let z equal 3 to the 2x plus y. Then I've got z squared minus z minus 6 equals 0. Which factorizes so you know you're on the right track. So z is equal to 3 or z is equal to minus 2. 3 to the 2x plus y equals 3, or 3 to the 2x plus y equals minus 2. The second one is not possible. 3 to the power of something is never a negative. So it's the left-hand one, which tells us that 2x plus y must equal 1. Okay, so that's the first part of the problem done, and I haven't even looked at the second equation yet. Okay, equation 2, the logs. We can put those logs together by... Um, log of a plus log of b is log of a times b. But first up, I'm going to use this equation that I've got the 2x plus y equals 1 to get rid of one of the variables in this problem. I'll get rid of the y's. So I've got equation 2, log of x plus 1. Keep the x's in there. Replace the y with two x, 1 minus 2x. So that's going to be 4 minus 2x. And then the other one, log base x plus 1, y plus x plus 4. So y is 1 minus 2x. So 5 minus x. And that all equals 3. Okay, now I use my log rules. So log of x plus 1, 4 minus 2x times 5 minus x equals 3. Then I get rid of the logs by going x plus 1 to the power on both sides. So they will cancel. End up with 4 minus 2x times 5 minus x equals x plus 1 all cubed. Now I need to expand out that binomial and also expand the left hand side quadratic. The right hand side binomial expands really nicely to um, that. Um, if you're not sure about that, look up binomial expansions. Uh, then we rearrange this equation. That's our cubic. Now we can go to the polynomial solver on the graphics calculator here. And just type it in and have a look. Um, if they give you a problem like this, it must have an easy answer to it. 
um, and in fact if you stare at it long enough you'll see that x is equal to 1 is a nice answer to it. So I've got x minus 1 is one of the factors. Um, and then that's the remaining factor, I just factored that by inspection. So we've got x equals 1 or x equals minus 2, sorry not minus 2, of you, I've just cheated on the graphics calculator here, um, minus 1 plus or minus 4.2426i. The question asked us to find real values of x and y, so actually we didn't need that last part. We could look at this quadratic and go its discriminant is negative, so there are no more real solutions. And we've got x equals 1 as the only real solution, and we go back to our um, equation which said that y was equal to 1 minus 2x and we go x equals 1 y equals 1 minus 2 times 1 so y equals negative 1 and that is the only real solution okay part b the car is traveling at night along a road shaped like a parabola i'm sure it is <laughs> with its vertex at the origin the car starts at the point 100 meters west and 100 meters north. Okay, so there's actually two possible answers to this question depending on how you interpret it. If you think the parabola is going this way, which is quite possible, except that the car will be driving away from the statue, um, it you can still you can still get an answer. So the statue is somewhere over here. It will mean that the car. The, the headlights hit the statue when the car is over on this side of things. Um, the marking schedule is assumed that the parabola is, a, is an upright one. And I don't think the question actually tells us enough to, to work that out. It says its vertex is at the origin and that the car starts at a point 100 metres west and 100 metres north. So we go 100, so this is west, it's north. 100, 100, so the car starts there, and we go around in the shape of a parabola, so to scale that's 100, oopsies, that's going to say negative 100, 100, okay, and then the statue is located 100 metres east and 50 metres north, so east, the statue is going to be in here somewhere and at what point on the road will the car's headlights illuminate the statue so it's going to be some point here where the car is where the tangent the tangent um, of the cars driving along this road the assuming that the headlights are pointing straight out um, which they wouldn't be they'd be pointing along the road um, <laughs> it's such a contrived question um, okay so if we we don't know that point because that's what the question is trying, um, trying to get us to find so if I just call it um, A, B to start with it's an unknown point A, B um, I can find the equation of the parabola easily because I've got it's at the origin so it's just going to be Y equals KX squared and I can sub in the information y equals 100 when x is negative 100. And that gives me a k value of 100 over 100 squared, or 1 over 100. So my parabola is y equals 1 over 100 x squared. And that means that the car is at a point um, a comma 1 over 100 a squared. I don't need another letter b because I know that it's on the parabola. Okay, now another thing we can do is, um, this is the calculus way of solving the problem, is we could say, um, find, the, um, find the gradient equation of this parabola because that will be the same as the gradient of the tangent. So y dash is 1 over 50x um, so at at the point x equals a, the gradient is 1 over 50a. Uh, and that's also equal to 
the gradient of the straight line, the straight line between the statue and the car. So if I take that line there and find the gradient is the run is 100 minus A, and the rise is um, the statue was 50 meters high, so it's 50 minus 1 over 100 A squared. So the rise of a run there gives us the same as the slope of the tangent. So we've got 1 over 50a is equal to 50 minus 1 over 100a squared, all over 100 minus a. Now I can cross multiply these uh, equa uh, this equation through and I can solve for a. 100 minus a equals 2500a minus, oopsies, my a for that slope is in the wrong place. That could have been a crucial error. The a needs to be at the top. So it's actually 100a minus, no, it's not. Well, okay, if I, if I do the whole thing of keeping the 50 and moving that to the top right, so it's going to be 100a minus a squared. The right-hand side will be 50 times 50. And it will be 50 times 1 over 100, so 1 half a squared. Times everything through by um, 2. 200a minus 2a squared is 5,000 minus a squared. a squared minus 200a plus 5,000 equals 0. Complete the square. A equals 100 plus or minus square root 5,000. Gives us two values of A, 170.71 for the positive root. Uh, or 29.29 for the negative root. And we go back to the problem that actually we want the negative root here because a needs to be less than 100. Um, so that's the answer to the question, 29.3 metres east of the origin. East of origin. And the other position, 170.71 based on symmetry, is somewhere up here where the car is still heading away from the statue but the tail lights tail lights at the statue. <laughs> okay, so that's one way of solving the problem. Um, look, the other the other way that you could go about it is to use the discriminant. So you could say um, let the tangent that goes through the point S tangent through S has the equation y minus 50 equals m x minus 100, where the slope of the tangent is m, and then we've also got the parabola equation, and these two equations must um, be tangents, so the discriminant of the system, when we put these equations together, we get a quadratic, and the discriminant of that must be zero. So if I do that, times everything through by 100, and then write it as a quadratic in standard format. OK, 
Okay, the discriminant b squared minus four lots of a, which is one times c, which is this, must equal zero. So line is tangent. Okay, and then if we solve that, we've got 10,000 m squared minus 40,000 m plus 20,000 equals zero. Divide everything through by 10,000. Complete the square. M is equal to two um, plus or minus root two. <clears throat> so that's our slope um, for, for which that works. And then if we think it's going to be a positive slope and it's going to be the flatter of the two because a 2 plus root 2 will be too steep, that will be the tail lights again. So if we say clearly m equals 2 minus root 2, um, we want the point of intersection. So we, we go back to the quadratic equation that we've got, which is this one, uh, and we replace m with 2 minus root 2. So we've got 1 over 100 x squared minus 50. Actually, no, I'll do it the I'll do the one below that because it didn't have the fractions in it. x squared minus 5,000 equals 100. 2 plus root. Oopsies, it was 2 minus root 2 we wanted. x minus 10,000. 2 minus root 2, and I'm just going to cheat, I'm just going to bang this into the graphics calculator as a polynomial, 2 degree, 1x squared, minus 100, lots of 2 minus root 2 for the x, and then minus 5,000, plus 10,000, lots of 2 minus root 2, and it gives me x equals 29.29 repeated, which is a good sign, right? If I had have rounded that 2 minus root 2, it might have given me two solutions that were very close together, but because I kept it as 2 minus root 2, the calculator recognized it and gave me a repeated solution, which it should have, and that was the same one as before. Okay, last part to this question. This video is a little bit long because I'm doing multiple ways of solving it, and I'm going to do two methods for this as well. The rate of spread of a rumour at a particular school is proportional to both the number of students who know it and the number of students who don't. So if we look at that differential equation here, if S is large, so if lots of people know it, then that KS factor is going to be big and therefore DS dt goes up. But the N minus S factor means is if S gets bigger, N minus S gets smaller, and so it actually competes. It's like the people who know it and the people who don't are both affecting the rate. It gets to a point where heaps of people know it, and so the rumour doesn't spread much. And this is the same with disease uh, spreading as well. So we've got this differential equation, and we're told n is the total number of students in the school. So it's a constant. And we're told initially two students know the rumour. So at t equals 0, we know that s is equal to 2, s being the number of students who know it. Show that the number of students who know the rumour at time t is, is given by this solution. So this is actually a question where we've got the solution, so differentiating is the way to go about this problem. Um, you can look at the time that it's going to take to solve both. We're going to do the integral first. Suppose you didn't have the solution, and we've got ds dt equals ks times n minus s. Okay, if you didn't have the solution, we would need to do this method. We would um, drop the factor 1 over s n minus s down underneath the ds. And we'd 
bring the dt up so we'd separate the equation. The left hand side has a quadratic in the denominator. S is the variable so we've got an s squared in there. So we can't just use logs um, and a substitution doesn't help us either. This is a key example where partial fractions is needed. So what we do is we write 1 over s times n minus s. We split it as some number a over s plus some number b over n minus s. Okay, partial fractions uh, work in this way. If the denominator is factorizable, then we can split the fractions using those factors. And we put it back together. In an earlier video, I covered partial fractions, so I'm not going to slow on this one. Put these fractions back together because it enables us to compare the numerator on the left with the numerator on the right. So we've got 1 equals a n minus a s plus b s. And 1 is the same as 1 plus no s. There's no s's on the left hand side. The right hand side we've got a n plus b minus a all times s. Meaning that the 0 must equal this, the coefficient of s. So b equals a. And 1 is the constant term, must equal a n. So a is equal to 1 over n. And therefore b is equal to 1 over n. Okay, so we take that back to our integral. And we've got a over s, which is 1 over n s. And then plus b over n minus s. And b was also 1 over n, so 1 over n times n minus s. equals kt plus, well, actually no, I'll leave that as an integral, I haven't, won't integrate it yet. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the n's, I'm going to times everything through by n, so that it goes up the top. So I've got the integral of 1 over s, plus 1 over n minus s, equals the integral of n k dt. N is a constant and so is K. So 1 over S antidiffs to log of S. The number of students that know the rumor is a positive number, so we don't need the absolute value symbols. Uh, the next one is ln N minus S. Well, N will be bigger than S. N is the population of the school. It's not possible for more people to know it than the population of the school because we're counting the number of people who know it in the school, not the neighbors and the people down the road at other schools. So n minus s, but we need to divide by negative 1 there because of the minus in the denominator in front of the s. So that's going to be ln s minus ln n minus s. And the right hand side is n k t. n k is a constant, so antidiffs to a linear function plus another constant. Okay. We can tidy this one up a little bit. We've got ln of s over n minus s using log rules equals... Um, nkt plus c. You can find c because the information in the question told us that at time equals zero the number of students that knew it was s equals two. So at t equals zero s is equal to two. So ln of two over n minus two is equal to c. Okay, so that goes back into the solution. Bear in mind, I have to make S the subject of this, surely. Integration is not the way to solve this problem. Okay. How do I make S the subject of this? Well... If I take that log constant to the left hand side, so it'll be a subtraction, and then write it as um, ln of s, ln of s over n minus s, take away ln of 2 over n minus 2, because then I can put those logs together as a division.
UKT. Now let's look at the solution I'm heading towards. I've got an N in there and I've got a K in there. I've got rid of the C, that's cool, and I've got to make S the subject of it. Okay, so take E on both sides to get rid of it. S, N minus 2 over 2, N minus S equals E to the N, K, T. Cross multiply. Um, move everything that's got an S to one side. So S has an N, but it's also got a plus 2 E to the N, K, T. If I move this term to the left hand side and then the other terms stay and the SCN goes to the oh what have I done there the S my bad the both the terms on the left hand side have an S so it's S times n minus 2 and also plus the 2e to the nkt and the only term that doesn't have an s is the 2n e to the nkt term okay so s the 2n e to the nkt all divided by n minus 2 2 e to the n k t. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but in the solution we're heading for, the only thing in the numerator is an n. So I need to divide out that thing at the top. So if I times by a half, that will get rid of the 2. And I also times by e to the minus n k t. That will ensure there's only an N left, and I just have to do that on the bottom as well. To times the whole thing by 1, so I haven't changed the solution at all, just make it look different. So it's N over N minus 2 all times by half E to the minus NKT. And then the, t the last term is the 2 with the half, and the e to the nkt times e to the minus nkt is plus 1. Is that the solution I was heading towards? Yes. Perfect. Now that is horrendous. So when you're given the solution, the question is not about integrating, because then you... We needed partial fractions, we needed some real good algebra. Um, if you've got the solution, just start at the solution and differentiate it. One thing you should check though, and I'll leave that for you, is to check that the solution satisfies the initial condition. So at t equals 0, that should come out to be s equals 2, and um, it's a quick bit of substitution to make that. But what we need to do is substitute this equation into the, into the differential equation and prove it works. Okay, so if we using an alternative approach, um, diff approach, and you can only do this when you're given the solution. So we start off with this uh, solution, which was in a fairly weird format, to be honest. It wasn't so obvious that that was the format we needed. Okay, and we want to prove... RTP required to prove that ds dt is equal to ks times n minus s. Okay, so left hand side is ds dt. So we need to diff this with respect to t. First thing I'm going to do is not use the quotient rule because n is just a constant. I'm going to rewrite this s as take all this denominator up to the numerator 
and make it to the power of negative 1. Now I can use chain rule. So the derivative with respect to t, I bring the minus down the front, it's minus n. I have the same thing written out again. To the minus 2. And then I times by the inner derivative, which is uh, 1 disappears. The half n minus 2 is just a constant. And then the e to the minus k and t differentiates to itself but then times by the derivative of the minus k and t. Okay, there is a minus there that is in that whole factor, which knocks off the minus at the front. Um, and that's about it. This thing here appears multiple times, or well, kind of. So it actually helps to recognize that that yellow thing is n over s. Now if we go back to the original solution, this thing here in the denominator, I can move that up to the top left and drop the s down the bottom right. So this whole yellow thing is equal to n over s. So I can make that substitution, go n times n over s to the minus 2, and then the other bracket, it doesn't have the 1, but it's got the other stuff. So it's n over s minus 1, all times by n. Okay, so that, that's the insight needed to um, put this into a into the format we want really, really quickly. So we've got n times um, s over n all squared, because it's a reciprocal, um, if I get rid of the negative power, and then the other brackets, if I times everything by n, I've got n squared over s minus n. So it's n over n squared, s squared over n, times by n squared minus sn all over s if I put those fractions together and then the s's cancel I've got um, s and some of the n's cancel on the other bracket n minus s and that was what I was trying to find where is the k oh there it is <laughs> my bad times k times k, times k, times k, proven happy days. Catch you in the next one.